Hey guys, this is going to be a first of a few videos that I'm going to be making that confront the principles of counting. Okay, so that would be like the fundamental uh, counting principle, permutations, and also combinations. But let's go ahead and start by taking a look at what we mean by counting in the first place. And, and you'll notice that I've written up here, at least pasted in some things from another document, but I say, you know, in, in many real life situations, we... Uh, you know, we want to count a number of possibilities that exist and you know we get into things that tend to be really complex after a while like lots of different possibilities so let's start with the basics let's take this example here I say for example consider the following situation we visit a deli that has four types of meat and they would be like ham turkey roast beef pastrami and three types of bread you know white wheat and rye and so maybe the question is this how many choices exist for us to make like a sandwich okay so it says um, in terms of illustrating this, one way we can do this is if you take a look on the right here, we can make a tree diagram from this. So a uh, tree diagram where this original point here is kind of like where we're starting, you know, kind of starting off here. We say, well, our, our first choice is this, what type of meat we want to have. So we say our first event, we're going to call this event, event one. Okay, sorry. So event number one, and we say event number one has four different ways that it can occur. So we say four different outcomes for event number one. So we say either ham, turkey, roast beef, or pastrami. Now, at this point we say, okay, so say we choose ham. At this point we're going to have to choose either white, wheat, or rye, but we say, okay, so event number two, event number two consists of choosing choosing a type of bread to serve this meat on. Okay, and so we say, well, how many ways can event number two happen? Well, in each of these four ways that we've chosen a meat, you know, we have to choose then therefore three three more things, but we say really what we're interested in, we say three outcomes for bread. How many distinct possible outcomes are there in the end here? And we say, well, counting this, we say, well, the four original and each of these four have three branching out of them. If we were to count up the total now, we'd say 12. And so what this does is it kind of presents what we call the fundamental counting principle. And the fundamental counting principle is this. Well, basically we could draw a tree diagram for everything, or we could basically say this, okay, and I'll paste this in here so we can see this now. Whoops, undo that, and I'll move this over and kind of try to clean this up a little bit here. But basically, the fundamental counting principle, we say in the simplest sense, uh, is this. For two events, you know, like we had over here, we event one, choose a meat, event two, choose a bread. We say if one event can occur in M different ways, okay, so M is the number of ways that, the say, the first event can occur, and another event can occur in N ways, then we would say, then the number of ways that both events can occur is m times n. So uh, what we're basically stating is this. We could have made our, you know, outcome tree over here a lot easier if we would have just said four outcomes for the first event, three outcomes for the second event, then there are 12 total possible outcomes for both of them. And you know what, this can actually be extended to three or more events. You see over here the fundamental accounting principle, I say, well, you know, if the first thing can happen, you know, m ways, and the second thing can happen n ways, and the third way p ways, then... It's just the product of these three. But in general, we basically say the number of ways that each possible outcome or each possible event can happen, number of outcomes for each event, we'll just multiply these together and that will present the total possible number of outcomes that can happen. So um, what we've got here are a couple of examples that I've generated, but we say, let's take a look at the first one here. We say the fundamental counting principle, example number one, we say at a restaurant, we have a choice of eight different entrees, two different salads, 12 different drinks, and six different desserts. So how many different dinners consisting of one salad, one entree, one drink, and one dessert could we possibly choose? Okay. Now, this being said, um, I want you to consider this. Making a tree diagram of this would not be very desirable because out of the original kind of origin spot, we'd have eight different branches, uh, you know, representing the eight different entrees. And then out of eight of those branches, or out of each of those eight branches, we'd have two branches for salads. And then out of those two branches that came out of eight branches, we'd have 12 different drinks. And, and you catch my drift here. So we're choosing one of each of these things. So here's what we'll do. We say, okay, so like, like events. We say entree. Entree is our first event here. Entree. Uh, second event. Second event would be salad. Salad is our second event. E2, if you will. And then we say drink. Drink. And then last but not least, drink, we have dessert. Okay, so dessert. And so we just want to simply list the number of ways that each thing can happen. So we say eight different entrees. So we have eight outcomes here. Uh, two different types of salad. So we'll put a two here. Uh, multiplied by six different, or 12 different types of drink, pardon me. And then six different desserts. So we say if we want to find the total number of outcomes, we'll just find the product of these numbers here. So that's like um, 16 times 72 
8 times 2 times 12 times 6 here. We say 8 times 2 times 12 times 6 equals, we get a grand total of 1152. So we say 1,152 different combinations. Okay, so that's the total number of outcomes. So I want to look at, uh, you know, a couple more examples. Start with this one here. We say, please use photographs, say, of various uh, facial features to help witnesses identify suspects. One basic identification kit includes, you know, like 195 hairlines, 99 eyes and eyebrows, 89 noses, 105 mouths, and 74 chins and cheeks. And so now we've got this massive set of outcomes. We say, if a witness can clearly remember the hairline and the eyes and eyebrows of a suspect, then how many different faces can be produced with the information? Now, this is a little bit different than the last example. We get a lot of people sometimes just want to run out and just start throwing things together in terms of the events in which we had like five different events, but one event was, was hair. Okay, so we say hair. Hair. Eyes, we're just going to write eyes. Eyes and eyebrows, but eyes, nose, mouth, and say chin. And so... I want you to keep in mind, when we read through it this time, I want you to notice that it says, if a witness can clearly remember the hairline and the eyes or eyebrows of a suspect. So what this means is this. When we talk about hairline and eyes, we say, uh, well, you know, they're going to be selecting, you know, how many possible outcomes are there for hairline? There's actually only one because they know which one it was. So we say there's only one possible outcome for hair and only one possible outcome for eyes and eyebrows because we know what these are. In terms of nose, though, we say we weren't sure about the nose. So there were 89 possible ways to choose a nose, if you read the problem from above, 105 ways to choose a mouth, and 74 ways to choose chin and cheeks. So 89, 105, 74. So we say 89 times 105 times 74. We get 691530. So we say... Uh, 691530 distinct different possible makeups that we could have here. Okay. So, um, moving right along, uh, let's take a look at uh, a couple more examples here. I'm going to actually block this off a little bit here. But we're going to do one more quick example, and this involves license plates. And so, for example, you know, I'm from Omaha, Nebraska. If you've seen any of my videos, that's where I hail from. So, Anyways, and in Omaha, Nebraska, we have license plates that have, like, say, for example, um, three numbers in three letters. I think I think it's three numbers, three letters. Um, let me check here. I wrote it down. <laughs> uh, three letters followed by three numbers. Not that it matters that much, but we say, okay, so three letters, three numbers. But we want to know how many distinct possible license plates can we make if numbers can repeat and letters can repeat, okay? We're going to kind of uh, look at this uh, and contrast it with can repeat and cannot repeat, okay? Um, let's take a look at the first instance here. We say, well, if I had to choose, say, a letter, how many different ways could we choose a letter for each of these three spots here? Let me write this out here, but the first, uh, you know, letter, we could choose from 26 in our alphabet, uh, 26 for the second letter and 26 for the third letter because we can repeat these letters. So it could be AAA and so, you know, we've got uh, 26 to choose from. And in, in terms of like choosing numbers, we say, well, we've got 10 digits to choose from for each of these numbers here. So to find the total number of possible distinct combinations, we say really it comes out to be 26 cubed times 10 cubed. We could figure this out. We say uh, 26 cubed, so 26 uh, third power. 17576. Okay, and the reason why I didn't do the 10 cubed, 17576, is because we can just throw on three zeros. So there are this many different license plates you can make if repetitions are permitted. But what if repetitions are not permitted? What happens is this, we say we still have three letters to choose from, sorry, not to choose from, but we say three letters to pick, and so we have 26 letters to choose from for the first spot, but for the second spot, since we cannot repeat, we're starting to see this instance where now I only have 25 to choose from, because say I choose A, now A is no longer able to be chosen for the second spot, and then, you know, say I choose one of these 25 letters now, I only have 24 to choose from for the remaining ones here. And if also I cannot repeat digits, we say, well, I've got 10 digits to choose from there, 0 through 9. 
Uh, but then I only have 9 to choose from here and 8 to choose from here. It's a little bit different of a situation here. So we're going to have to do uh, 26 times 25 times 24 using our fundamental counting principle times 10 times 9 times 8 is 11232. 11232. So 11232 and then three zeros. So this counting really these three zeros on the end here, you know. We could say you'll notice here 11232 is less than 17576, uh, but there were less possible combinations because we could not repeat the letters. So uh, just a quick brief uh, video overview of how you would use the fundamental counting principle or the FCP.